artificial intelligence is having a moment right now. AI content is popping up everywhere, it's triggered a massive writer's strike in Hollywood, and now everyone is scrambling to try and cash in on the trend. While it's pretty neat that AI can generate some trippy artwork, fake Wes Anderson trailers, and photos of the Pope wearing a puffy jacket, over at Tesla, they've been leveraging AI for some more practical, real-world applications. Tesla has been deep into AI research for years now, and they've been leveraging advancements in machine learning to transition their full self-driving technology away from hardware sensors and radar over to a purely vision-based neural network. Few people know this right now, but Tesla is on the verge of releasing a fully AI-driven autonomous vehicle. That's where the next major update to their FSD beta software is going with version 12. And if an AI taxi driver isn't enough for you, Tesla will be moving that same technology straight from their car into an AI robot butler that you can buy and put into your own house. Tesla is the company that will take AI out of the computer and unleash it into the real world. Which should be fine, right? So the first thing to really nail down is the difference between Tesla's vision-based self-driving and other companies' sensor-based driving. Because we've now seen plenty of self-driving cars out there in the world that can operate without even having a person in the driver's seat. Waymo, Cruise, and a bunch of other small companies have popped up with these driverless taxi services. So if Tesla is so great, then why do they still need a person to sit behind the wheel and stop the car from randomly smashing into stuff? Which is definitely a thing that full self-driving Teslas still tend to do. But the difference in implementation of self-driving technology between what Tesla is doing and what a company like Waymo is doing is like apples to oranges. They are not directly comparable. You can see this immediately with your own eye. Look at a cruise driverless vehicle and you can't miss the giant pile of stuff on the roof. Now look at a self-driving Tesla and it looks exactly like any other Tesla, which just looks like an ordinary car. The giant pile of stuff on the roof is an advanced sensor suite containing LiDAR, radar, sonar, and 360 cameras. And that's how the vehicle perceives the world around it, a multi-input data-based approach. LiDAR in particular is a really effective tool for making precise measurements. LiDAR can detect objects, measure the dimensions, the distance, and velocity very accurately. Using that data, a self-driving car can identify things like cars, pedestrians, traffic cones, and then can use velocity and distance data to know where those objects are and where they are going. So that all makes sense. Elon Musk says LiDAR is useless, but that's probably an exaggeration. It does seem to be working just fine in the context of these existing driverless cars. Meanwhile, over at Tesla, they've chosen the vision-based approach. The idea here is that human beings don't need all of these measurements of dimensions, distance, and velocity to drive a car. We just use our eyes, our brains, and our memory. So Tesla decided they could replicate that biological system by replacing eyes with cameras, brains with AI computers and neural networks, and memory with billions of frames of labeled video. So where a LiDAR system will detect a pedestrian by measuring their dimensions, say five and a half feet high by two feet wide, probably a human, while a Tesla Vision system has a neural network that's been fed millions of video clips where pedestrians have been specifically identified. So when the vehicle sees a person through the camera, it calls on that memory to recognize what it's looking at. Two different methods to arrive at more or less the same result. But the problem with LiDAR is that it is already operating at its maximum. There's no room for improvement. But with an AI software-based system, you can consistently add more capability as you continue to train the neural network and make it smarter. All right, folks, now is your opportunity to fuel the content you love while also wearing clothing that reflects you and what you're interested in with the Tesla Space and Space Race merch store. This is our first ever merch launch and will only be available for a limited time, so head on over to shop.theteslaspace.com now before it's too late. Now, if we go back in time to the very first iteration of Tesla's full self-driving beta, we can watch the progression happen from radar-based data to AI vision. 
Looking at the earliest versions of FSD beta, the on-screen visualization is super primitive and janky compared to what we're familiar with currently. But the big thing to notice is that the car is drawing boxes around every object that it recognizes. Those are cuboids, and that's the way that radar sees the world, just length, width, height. And the road itself is basically just a blank void with some very jittery boundary lines drawn on it. The cameras can recognize some basic features like traffic lights and intersections, but for the most part the car is driving blind. If you look at the most recent marketing videos from Cruise, you'll also see those boxes around everything, so you can tell that it's perceiving the world based on measurements, and not actual visual cues. Then fast forward to Tesla's current FSD version 11, and we've gone from janky cube land to a full three-dimensional virtual world. Instead of reading everything as a box, now the car is picking out sedans, SUVs, pickup trucks, buses. It sees pedestrians, dogs, bicyclists, people on electric scooters. It even recognizes garbage cans now. And that is all done by vision alone. The car is taking video feeds from all of the surround cameras and rendering them into one single 360 degree view. Then the AI just picks out and identifies all of the relevant objects. Then by reading all of the different signs and road markings, the AI can navigate through the environment based on the current rules of the road. This makes the system extremely versatile in theory, you can drop a Tesla into any road environment, and it should be able to figure out where it can and can't drive based on what it's able to see. Up until very recently, that's been the primary use of AI in full self-driving, object detection, and reading the environment. While the actual control of the vehicle was still governed by traditional, coded software. The biggest problem with using code to control a vehicle in traffic is that it can only ever be reactionary in nature. The basic structure for writing code is to use a bunch of if statements. You basically tell the computer, if this happens, then do that. The thing about a human driving a car is that your brain is able to simultaneously react to what is happening in the moment while also making predictions about what will happen in the near future. You can make a lot of assumptions based on your knowledge of an area and your previous driving experience. In order for a self-driving car to be as capable as a human and function on the road alongside human drivers, then it really does need to be able to do the same thing. That's the direction that Tesla is going with their latest round of software updates. On May 10th, Elon Musk said that version 12 of FSD beta will be fully AI from video in to control out. So. As Tesla rolls out more neural network control functions to FSD, the result is that the car is able to literally think ahead about where it's going and what the traffic is doing, and it can make a plan for the most efficient way to maneuver through that space. This also allows the car to color outside the lines, so to speak. One of the great things about Tesla Autopilot is that it does an amazing job of staying inside the painted lines. That's great for cruising the highway, but Driving through city intersections often requires some extra creativity. You have to find a natural path through the chaos that doesn't adhere strictly to the painted lines. Tesla has been learning how to do that by watching human drivers for years. They can take data from a human-driven vehicle, cross-reference that against what Autopilot would have done if it were in control, and then learn how to make Autopilot behave in a more natural, human-like way. This is also being implemented to help the car to recognize weather conditions like rain and snow and understand how they affect driving controls like traction and steering so that just like a human, the car can drive for the road conditions. This kind of technology can make for a much safer vehicle. If you think about things like traction control and ABS and stability control, those things only kick in after you've already lost traction or gone into a skid. Imagine if the system could recognize that it was going to lose traction in the near future and make corrections before that even happens and prevent the skid entirely. Tesla is also using these planning neural nets to make predictions about what other road users are going to do. They're even beginning to use pedestrian body language to try and figure out what a person is about to do next. This is one of the most difficult things to judge while driving. If you see a person on the sidewalk, you have to get a read on what they're doing. Which direction are they going to cross? Are they standing and waiting, or are they going to try and jaywalk? 
Are they paying attention to traffic? Do they see you? Should you stop and wait for them to just keep going? That is not something that you can accomplish by simply measuring distance and velocity. You really need a car that has a brain and a situational awareness to really understand the world around it. And that's obviously something that is going to be really difficult to figure out and to get it to a point where the system works 100%. We've seen massive progress in AI over a very short time. Just think about where Dolly Mini was last year versus what the latest version of Midjourney can create. It's amazing. But even with that massive improvement, there are still a lot of bugs to work out, even in something as relatively simple as an image generator. Like, why does AI still make hands look so weird? It's just not capable of understanding fingers at all for whatever reason. So it's that last 5% that is still going to take a really long time to get right. And that means that a driverless Tesla is still probably not something that we'll see anytime soon. But the upshot of that problem is that once Tesla is able to solve it, if they are able to, but assuming that they can do it, then that means every Tesla in the world can have the ability to go driverless overnight. That's the true power of AI, and that's why it's probably worth all of the work that's being put in right now. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.